So that means the husband could be tripping. But if the wife does what God says she's supposed to do, she can overtake him. Like, I, I, I don't know if I gave you this example, but I, I've shared it thousands of times ever since it was shared with me. And I believe it's Smith, the Wigglesworth, but I'm not sure. But his wife would go to church all the time. He wasn't going to church. And so his wife, uh, he said, uh, you know what? I'm a little tired of you going to this church. He said, tell you what, you go out this house today, I'm changing the locks. And she was like, I go to church. I mean, it's God. I got to go to church. So she went to church. Uh, he changed the locks. She comes back late at night, and the locks are changed. So they had a porch with a swing and a blanket. So she, she goes to the swing, grabs the blanket, wraps herself up, and sits at the door. In the morning, he goes out to get the newspaper, opens the door. Boom! She falls in, gets up and says, honey, what do you want for breakfast? He dropped to his knees and says, I need the Jesus that you have. Because there's no way you should be loving me based on what I've done. See, so, so that's an example of the wife doing what God told her to do. Not waiting till he got fixed. Because that's called a conditional relationship. We talked about uh, uh, God type of love, agape love, that unconditional uh, Unconditioned relationship this weekend. Uh, and then uh, use discovery questions to help them uh, discover themselves, to recover themselves. Uh, 2 Timothy 2. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, uh, Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Lean not to your own understanding. Why? Because you could deceive yourself. First, I mean, James chapter 1, verse 9. And then uh, if you deceive yourself, it could lead to uh, was it, uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. So when we're counseling people, we're not fighting with them. It says, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach. Remember, we talked about being a, a student of what you're, what you're doing when you're counseling. So, so you're prepared to teach patient. Oh, this will be interesting. It says, in meekness, persuading in return for attack, instructing those what? That oppose themselves. Right? If God uh, peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. It, verse 26. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So, so that's our, our goal is to, uh, to help them to discover themselves so they can recover themselves. And so you do that with discovery questions. So, so most of the time when you're talking to people, you, the Holy Spirit will give you what's in them, that, the, the, the solution. So, so you sit in a session and you yield to the Holy Spirit. They'll sit down, they'll start talking, and you let them talk as much as possible. Just let them talk. And the Holy Spirit will tell you stuff. Just take notes. Write down what the Holy Spirit is telling you. After you write down what the Holy Spirit is telling you, because the Holy Spirit will download solutions, scriptures, wisdom. You just keep writing it down. Now, after you write it down, you're using that uh, as your, your bullet points to ask questions for them to discover what you wrote down. As opposed to, you, you see, because revelation is, is, uh, can be addictive. You know, like a wisdom could be like, oh, this is sweet. Oh, this is sweet. So you... you your, your thought could be so quick to share, like, you ain't even heard this one before. Bam! That's what you need to do. Yeah, but you may, you have the revelation because the Holy Spirit is giving it to you, but just because you told them, don't mean they're going to get it. But if you ask them the question to pull out, because the Holy Spirit is revealing what's already in them. So if you ask them the right questions, it'll, it'll pull that out of them. Now it's real to them, and they'll live it out. Because they discovered it, you just didn't pour into an empty glass. See, and that's the temptation. Sometimes we just be pouring into empty glass. What you want to do is this. See, the way you handle this situation is like that. Well, they sitting there looking at you like, that don't even make sense to me. And then you, now you have all this repetitiveness going back over, over and over and over. Let them realize it. It's already in them. So all you have to do, if you ask them the right questions and walk them down the road to what the Holy Spirit is showing you, then they'll go, I got it. I see it. As a guy comes in my office, uh, this is in Ohio, and this is a very controversial guy. 
Uh, so he present one thing. We were talking about this this weekend. So he had a display on the marquee, but it was something else on the inside. So I knew how he was, very manipulative. Like he would come in, he would get help, would walk out. Which, uh, what do you think about Minister Bradley? I don't know about that dude. Now when he's talking to me, it was like, hey man, oh my God, I can't believe this, I see this. So he comes in, I said, oh, I got him again. So he says, well, this is my situation. He's breaking it down. I said, well, tell you what, let's flip this thing around. I said, you counsel me. I, I have your problem. What would you tell me? Because hey, you're a leader, you wisdom. He had his blog. What he would do is come and listen to certain things, and then uh, it would be his blog. So like I, I could be teaching on Wednesday. He would take that and go back, and the next day it would be his blog. It would say nothing about me. It would be his blog. So I said, so, so you counsel me. So, so this is my situation. So I broke down the situation he gave me. He says, okay, well, what you want to do is this. So he starts counseling me. Good wisdom. And then in the middle of the session, he said, wait a minute. Oh, man, I got it. He says, oh, man. Man, you tricked me. I said, no, I didn't trick you. I said it was already in you. So he walked out. Now, I never said one thing to him. He counseled himself. But when he walked out, he, 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 he talked to somebody uh, later that week. He's like, man, I don't know about that, that, that Minister Bradley guy. Well, see, I didn't feel bad. Why? Because I didn't say nothing. So you don't have to worry about the weight of, did I do the right thing? Did I say the right thing? They discovered it for themselves. Especially if somebody does something wrong and you got to counsel them. Uh, this is the last example I'll give you and we'll close out here. Uh, uh, I was over uh, the ministers, and so I also was over facilitating service. And eventually, we'll have somebody that can facilitate service. Actually, I had somebody share with me this weekend, like, you, know, you need to get somebody else to do some of that stuff because you don't remember everything. And you don't because you'd be so caught up in the anointing and ministering. So I forgot all types of stuff y'all may not know, but I did. And he said, he said, man, why don't you get somebody else to do that? Which we'll grow to. But this, that was my job. I was a facilitator. So all the pastor had to do is come and share the word. So, uh, so I had a team. So I got, got, and I told him, I said, a facilitator is not, the, he's not preaching that day. He's just guiding things. So if you guys sing, he's, he might let, you, let us know what's going to happen next. Um, he may pray, but he, on, if you look on the order of service, it don't say facilitator on there. But some people, when they get the mic, they want to inject themselves in the service. So what I told the guys is I said, I said, we're not a part of the service. We just keep it rolling. We just keep it going. I said, that's not our opportunity to preach. I said, you don't see me preaching up there. I'm not there to preach. I'm there to keep everything flowing. Flowing. Everybody, all the pieces, sound, everything. My job is to make sure everybody harmonized. So uh, I'm in the back one day, and I'm coming out to the service, and I hear preaching, almost hooping. So when I get in the service, the guy looks at me, because he's wondering, I wonder if he hurt me. I know that's what he's thinking. But I didn't say nothing. He probably just got emotional, had the mic, made a mistake. People make mistakes, right? You're allowed to at least make a mistake one time. The next week, I purposely came into service late, did the same thing. And I sat there, looked at me, you know, like, I knew he's looking like, does this guy, did he say? I, I, didn't, I stood in trip. I called him into my office, but I didn't state the obvious. Man, what did I tell you to do? I didn't do that. I said, now, what did you hear when we went over the protocol for facilitate? He broke it down word for word. See, because if he didn't understand it, then I would have just had to go back over it. I said, okay, what did you, how do you believe you've been complying to that protocol? He said, well, actually, I think I've been doing a good job with the exception of two times. He says, I think I kind of went overboard a couple times. The session is done for me. I didn't have to say nothing. He discovered everything. He shared everything. And one, so you don't have to walk away when people, man, they're going, they talking down to me. They tried to break me. You didn't break nobody down. You just asked them the right questions for them to discover what they needed to do. All right, we'll, we'll end, we'll end there. Uh, we'll talk about.